Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to this morning's study. We're going to return to where we left off four weeks ago. And in so doing, shall we ask our Heavenly Father to enlighten our minds, direct our steps, and help our conversation in all that we are about to study. Shall we seek his face now in prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity we have to open your word to be guided in the steps that you would have us to take. Be with us now. Do with us that is necessary so that your will may be done. Help us as we open your word, that your angels may attend us, that your spirit may enlighten our minds. Direct us so that we may more clearly understand all that you would have us to know for this time in earth's history, so that we may be prepared to give the message that you would have us to give. Guide us now, each one. Be with us. Join with us. Help us to understand more clearly. I thank you for each one that is here this morning, for those that will view this later. And uh, we ask, Father, now for your blessing as your word is open before us. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are returning now to Ezekiel 33. 3.3 three being a type of a doubling. Now, as a question, as we are dealing with this, this chapter in this book, have we considered what the name of Ezekiel means and its relation to us today. I've never considered that. Now, four weeks ago, I gave each a challenge to read at least the first 10 verses of this chapter. The first nine are part of one book. What does Ezekiel mean? Does it mean God is my strength or something very similar? If we take it in Hebrew, I believe we would find that the meaning is God will strengthen. Is this not what we are looking for today, to be strengthened by God so that we may go forward to do the work that he would have us to do? Amen. So is the message of the book of Ezekiel specifically for those that are studying within the movement today? Well, it should be. It says uh, those that know God will be strong and do exploits. Now, four weeks ago, when we left off on this, we had begun, we'd gone through many of the documents that Mrs. White had written. Here, we return to the verses from the Bible. Ezekiel 33, 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, A land when I bring a sword upon her. If the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Now, why is it important that they're saying that Ezekiel is being told, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, why is it important that we're looking at a man of their coasts to be set up as a watchman? Now, this this term, if we are looking at the Hebrew numbers, has a preposition, mene, and a word, Kase or kase, which can mean border, brink, edge, outermost coast, shore, utmost part. Yeah, so it referred to a border. Um, and then the, the min, mini, that's just means from. So a man from the border. Okay. And set him for a watchman. So somebody who's on the border. All right. Now, it's interesting to me when we look at this, at this word this man from the border. We're dealing with Hebrew 7, 0, 9, or 7. There are only four factors to this number. Two of those factors are prime numbers. So one and itself, along with 47 and 151, make up this word, this particular Hebrew word. So in other words, if the people of the land take a man from outside, from far away and set him for their watchman. Why would they not be taking someone from within their group to be set as a watchman? Well, because you wouldn't be able to see the enemy coming. You need somebody on the on the border. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, His blood shall be upon his own head. Now, four weeks ago, we got into quite a conversation about he that hearing heareth as being a type of a doubling. 
And Peter was making some very good points about the structure of this verse. Now, what we continued with, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. If we are comparing verses four and five together, is this not making basically the same statement twice? What do we see here? Well, Dwight, I, can I make a statement what you said earlier? Please. Um, don't you have to know what the trumpet sounds like and what the uh, message sounds like before you can give it? Yes. Now, why why were the trumpets to be blown? The trumpet uh, signifies uh, judgment, warning. And to tell people to gather together. Is that not correct? Yes, it is. So the trumpet was to be blown to signify one of three things. When you hear the trumpet being blown, is that important? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trumpet means prepare. Did William Miller blow a trumpet in his time? Yes. They blew the trumpet to warn about the judgment which uh, was coming. Are those that give the final message blowing a trumpet in the figurative sense to tell the people that it is important that their sins be given up? Amen. For what day are we currently living in? Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. Yes, brothers. So... If we're not willing to give up our sins in the Day of Atonement, are we not ignoring the trumpet? Yes, we are. So if we're ignoring the trumpet, then does not verse 33, 5 apply to us? He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. If we are not willing to accept the warning of the Day of Atonement, then Where do our sins reside? They reside in us. Is that that what you want today, brothers and sisters? Certainly not. Then he continued, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. If we come to an understanding of the time in which we live and we give no warning, but we give a peace and safety message. Oh, everything is fine. You don't have to worry about the lake of fire. You don't have to worry about these figures that they are shown on these charts. All of this, you just don't have to worry. All you need is the love of Jesus. If we're not willing to give a warning message that the Day of Atonement is about to close, if we are not willing to warn our brothers and sisters of what is about to happen, then their blood is upon whom? Upon us. Is that what you want? Is that what any of us want at this time? No. Now, as we continue, now we come to a document that was written on the 25th of June of 1900, according to the Gregorian calendar. But according to the Julian calendar, it's written on the 12th day of the sixth month. Is there any symbolic reference here? What do we see? I'm seeing a reference to the 1260. I'm seeing a reference to the 2520. I'm seeing a warning for us today. The first statement is powerful. And the second is most like it. God's government is one of individual responsibility. No one can save the soul of another against his will. Does it do us any good if we have membership in any organization as far as our salvation is concerned? No. No man can perform the duty of another. I cannot save you and thereby save myself this is individual responsibility it is a serious thing for men who claim to teach the bible to lay stumbling blocks before the feet of church members and unbelievers to rest the scriptures to their hurt god's word is misinterpreted and misapplied ministers teach for doctrine the commandments of men they are both ignorant of the scriptures and of the power of God. Manuscript, oh, 
33 of 1900. So dealing with Ezekiel 33, now we're looking at an unpublished manuscript, manuscript 33. What's Mrs. White trying to tell us now? Those who have a knowledge of the scriptures are to search out the sheep who are hungry for the truth. Can a sleepy watchman search out the sheep? Can a sheep that is asleep become hungry for the truth. They are to bear their message to all, that those who have not been fed with pure provender, pure food, may have an opportunity to hear and to understand for themselves. God's faithful messengers must lift up the voice, as did John the Baptist, proclaiming the message of warning, preparing the way for his second coming. God will not leave his people in darkness to be led by men who, though they occupy the position of shepherds of the flock, are warring against God's commandments. It has been said many times that God would prefer that all be saved. This is an individual choice. This is one of individual responsibility. Can we save the soul of another against their will? No. I Move on to the next. So if we're going to be one of the faithful messengers, we are to proclaim the message of warning, preparing the way for Christ's second coming. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. This is the word of the Lord. When the Lord sends his servants with a message to warn the members of the churches to open before them the truth, many of those who claim to be shepherds refuse to examine the word of the Lord for themselves and commence a tirade against the messenger and the message of truth circulating bitter falsehoods originated by those who have apostatized from the truth. What does this statement say to you today? Have we seen this occurring already? Yes. Okay. They receive these falsehoods and make every possible use of them in opposing those whom the Lord has sent with a message of warning to lead the people to search the Bible for themselves with a sacred awe. Fearing lest they should be found fighting against God and committing blasphemy. God's messengers are charged with doing the work of Satan. But as they follow the example of the great teacher, their works bear witness of them. Priests and rulers were continually on Christ's track, seeking his life because he spoke the truth concerning them. Men claiming to be teachers are in 1900 doing the same work that the Jews did. Men claiming to be teachers in 2024 are doing the same work that the Jews did. The 33rd chapter of Ezekiel should be carefully studied. Those who take upon themselves the responsibility of preaching the word and yet neglect to search the scriptures prayerfully. Those who entertain error and preach false doctrines contrary to a plain, thus saith the Lord, will bring ruin upon themselves. Their condemnation will be proportionate to the influence their words and example have had upon men and women in leading them into a path of transgression. He who has taken upon him the work of a minister is responsible to help the members of his church to be obedient to the word of the Lord. But many ministers stand directly in the way of the people's obedience. They warn them against doing the very things that God has told them to do. Are we to be giving the message of Palmoni? Yes, we are. What happens if we are not giving that message? What happens 
if we choose to ignore the wonderful number. Well, you found numbered and wanting. Is, is that the king is of that, Babylon was? Is that the condition that we wish to find ourselves in? No. Are we seeing this occur within the movement at this time? Um, and I really find it serious where she says they shall be found fighting against God and committing blasphemy. At the time of Christ's first advent, there were those that had studied the word and that understood the times in which they lived. We have men that came from the east that understood the time and understood the signs. We have two within Israel that understood the time and understood the signs. They knew what was soon to occur. They knew that one was being sent to Israel that would become their priest, their judge, and their king. All of this was available to be understood, including by the priests, including by the rulers. But they chose not. They took upon themselves the responsibility to present the word, and they chose to search the words of men carefully and set the scriptures aside. Every man will be called to give a strict account for the way in which his influence has been exerted. Those who do the work of the enemy of all righteousness did in the heavenly court and still does on this earth will know very well what it means to answer for professedly being on the Lord's side, when in reality they were on the side of the enemy, hindering others from receiving the word of the Lord. The blood of the souls who have perished through their unfaithfulness will be found upon their heads. How is Father Miller described after his passing by Sister White? After Miller's passing? Yes. I know he, he would be saved, but the others that surrounded him or influenced him would have a problem. Does she not describe him as that faithful servant of God? Yeah. Is Miller's resting place guarded by angels from heaven? Yes, it is. What of the graves of those that attempted to have Miller come out in opposition to the message that he first gave? They are lost. They are lost. They're the blood of the souls that perished through their unfaithfulness will be found on their heads. We will see this occur again and again. Ezekiel 33, 7. <clears throat> So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. God will strengthen the watchmen that are sent unto the house of Israel. God will strengthen those that go before the ancients of the house of Israel and unto Jerusalem itself. God will strengthen is this a statement? Is this a promise? Or is it both? Consider carefully. Does the word of the Lord return unto him void? No. So in this situation, the name of Ezekiel, God will strengthen. Is this his word that we can rely on? Manuscript 7, 1868. But now you have become more reconciled to the plain labor adopted by the, seven, the Sabbath-keeping Adventists. You are not clear until you work earnestly to counteract your past labor, which has been in opposition to the work which you now acknowledge to be of God. You have a class of brethren you could help. You have a duty to perform in setting the truth before them and urging upon them its claims. You dread to approach opposers. But when you are sensible to the responsibilities and duties devolving upon the watchmen on the walls of Zion, you will work more earnestly and courageously. Here again, she repeats Ezekiel 33, 6 and 7. This is the business of the watchmen to hear the words at the mouth of the Lord and warn the people. Ministers are mouthpieces for God, yet some are too indolent to exercise zeal, earnestness, and fervor to bear the words of God to the people. This is no trifling work. It is a work that gives no time for ease or self-convenience, 
no release from watching and warning. The 33rd chapter of Ezekiel is an outline of the work that God approves. Those in the positions of sacred trust, who's honored of God by being appointed to stand as watchmen on the walls of Zion, are in every respect to be all that is embraced in the meaning of the word watchman. Ezekiel 33, verses 2, 6, and 7. They are to be ever on guard against the dangers threatening the spiritual life and health and prosperity of God's heritage. Now, I have a question. Here we have these three numbers, 2, 6, 7. Do those numbers relate to anything on either the 1843 or the 1850 charts? Not that I know of. If you multiplied 2 by 6 by 7, what would you come out with? So here you got 2 by 6, which is 12, multiplied by 7, which gives us 84. Here again, the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel is an outline for the work that God approves. The 33rd chapter of Ezekiel is the exact opposite of what God has seen occurring in Ezekiel 8 and 9. Here, Mrs. White continues in manuscript 165 of 1902. Upon us as ministers, God has placed a burden of solemn responsibility. Us. Is she including herself in this description? Yes, she is. Is she including us in this description? I think she is. So we bear a burden of solemn responsibility. Realizing that we are his chosen watchmen, we should have constant concern and forethought in regard to the state of the church. We should have constant concern and forethought in regard to the state of ourselves. We should give much time to earnest prayer for divine wisdom and guidance in order that we may know how best to promote God's honor and glory. He has commissioned us to honor him, the omnipotent one, in every word and in every act. From him comes our maintenance. We are wholly dependent upon his sufficiency, his bounty for our support. Ezekiel 33, 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine end. If we do not give a warning to those that are not following God in spirit and in truth, we will be responsible for their blood. Do we want to find ourselves in that condition? Manuscript 92 of 1897. The message might not please those to whom it was sent. They might not wish for anything new, but desire to go right on as they have been doing. But the Lord stirred them up with reproofs. He rebuked their course of action. He infused new life into those who were sleeping at their post of duty, who were not faithful sentinels. He showed them their responsibility and that they would be held accountable for the safety of the people. They were watchmen who were not to sleep day nor night. They were to discern the enemy and give the alarm to the people that every one might stand at his post, that the watching foe might not obtain the least advantage. Is this an if easy... the method? foe is watching, why aren't... Sorry, why I was going to say... Please, go ahead. Oh, is watching. No, I just said what, what I needed to say. Satan is, Satan is vigilantly watching us. What are we doing? Right. But is this an easy message to bear? No, it's not. Was Elijah pleased with the message that he was given? Was Jonah pleased with the message that he was given? How many times have we seen a prophet being given a message? a watchman being given a message that was not easy for them to present. And today the Lord declares to his watchmen, if they are unfaithful and do not warn the people who are in peril, 
they will be taken away in their sins. And their blood, he says, will I require at thy hands. But if his messengers lift up their voices in reproof and warning to turn men from their wicked ways, and these souls will not hear, then the watchman is clear. The offender against God will be taken in his sins. His blood will be upon his own soul. Let it never be forgotten that these institutions are to cooperate with the ministry of the delegates of heaven. They are among the agencies represented by the angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. From them is to go forth the terrible denunciation. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. They are represented by the third angels that followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And in a large decree through our publishing houses is to be accomplished the work that the other angel who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. Solemn is the responsibility that rests upon our houses of publication. Those who conduct these institutions, those who edit the periodicals and prepare the books, standing as they do in the light of God's purpose and called to give warning to the world are held by God accountable for the souls of their fellow men. To them, as well as to the ministers of the word, apply the message given by God to his prophet of old. Son of man, I have set thee a watchman under the house of Israel. Therefore, shalt thou hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Never did this message apply with greater force than it applies yesterday, right? Today. Today. So this message needs to be applied today. Comment from the chat. May God help us first preach to ourselves and change in our characters before we preach to other people. Amen. Amen. The work begins with us. More and more, the world is setting at nothing the claims of God. Men have become bold in transgression. The wickedness of the inhabitants of the world are, has almost filled up the measure of their iniquity. This earth has almost reached the place where God will permit the destroyer to work his will upon it. The substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath, is the lacked act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. He will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the world for their iniquity. And the earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. What happens when God arises? What happens when Christ arises? The provision ceases. Exactly. Mrs. White repeats this in special testimonies. Solemn is the responsibility that rests upon our houses of publication. Those who conduct these institutions, who edit the periodicals and prepare the books, standing as they do in the light of God's purpose, are called to give warning to the world, are held by God accountable for the souls of their fellow men. To them, as well as to the ministers of the word, applies the message given by God to his prophet of old. Son of man, I have set thee a watchman upon the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word of my, at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, that thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. What happens 
in the houses of publication, if they choose to change that which Sister White has written, to make it easier to give to those currently not understanding the Word of God. Ain't it the same punishment you have in Revelation 22? I would think so. How many times have Christ's object lessons been changed? How many times has the great controversy been changed? How many times have the words that were given by Sister White been watered down because we don't want to offend someone? Yeah, I think uh done it a few times. That one that one little book called The Great Hope or something like that. Right. That's a really watered down version there. What did you think of it? I don't know what to think of it. There's, there's nothing there that excites, you know, spirit or anything. Well, it sure ain't as big as the big, the um, great controversy. It does not want to cover things in depth. And what's one of the major points, one of the major series of points that are missing from the great hope that we find in the great controversy? The man of sin. Papa. Do we also not miss the historical applications and the numbers that were being presented by Sister White? Yes. Can we set aside the numbers that we find in Scripture? No. Okay. In all our work, even in mechanical lines, God desires that the perfection of his character shall appear. The exactness, skill, tact, wisdom, and perfection, which he required in the building of the earthly tabernacle, he desires to have brought into everything that shall be done in his service. Every transaction entered into by his servants is to be as pure and precious in his sight as were the gold and frankincense and myrrh, which is sincere, uncorrupted faith the wise men from the east brought to the infant Savior. Here again, the wise men from the east had been studying. Here again, the wise men from the east brought three symbols, gold for the king, frankincense for the priest, myrrh for the sacrifice. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Now, here we are today. We have a verse. We have several more items to address, and we are coming very close to the close of this week's session. What does it mean to us if a warning is given and the one that is warned chooses not to accept it? We deliver our souls. We deliver our souls. Have we done the work that God has asked us to do? We did it partially. We did it partially in, in telling Nashville. Here we have a work that is before us. A word of warning is to be given. Did John the Baptist warn the nation of Israel before the baptism of Christ? Yes, he did. Did he continue to warn the nation of Israel after the baptism of Christ? He did. Yes, he did. Did these people accept the warning and accept Christ as their Messiah? No, instead, no, instead they afflicted him. Okay. <laughs> For this next week, I want you to consider this verse. Consider carefully what this verse means to your life today. Consider carefully the message that we are to be given and to where the message is to be given. Any other thoughts, comments, or questions from what we have addressed today? Yes, I'm asking. I have a question. Yes, please. In the way how we warned Nashville about the destruction, and then we published the papers, then we sent to them, didn't we do our part in warning them? Do we still need to have Do we still need to warn them? I think John the Baptist gives us the best example because he went out before Christ to give a warning message. He continued to give a warning all the way to the time of the baptism of Christ. 
And he continued to warn even after the baptism of Christ, as Christ was beginning his earthly ministry. He continued to warn while Christ's ministry was beginning. He did the work that he was asked to do. Now, if we give a warning to someone and they choose to ignore it, we're going to continue to give a warning to those around the one that has chosen to ignore that message. We do not know what is going to affect their hearts. It is up to us to be diligent in the manner in which we do the work that God sets before us. Does that answer your question? Yes, I've been answered. Thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions today? Okay, then let us close with prayer. Loving Father in heaven, forgive us of our sins. Help us so that we may be more faithful servants for that which you would have us to do. Remove from us pride. Remove from us arrogance. Do with us that which is necessary. Help us now. Guide us and direct us so that your will may be done in our lives and to do those things that you would seek for us to do. Direct us to this end. We thank you, Father, for this time we've had together. We thank you for the presentation that is about to occur. Be with Theodore. Be with this message. Direct us in all ways. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.